What I like about WrestleMania 2 is, is that the tagline is, what the world has come to. I know. <laughs> it's, it's just like, it's, what, what's happened here? It's also the, like, the most basic <laughs> thing you can say. Because it's like going, well, this is where we are. Yeah, well, I know. <laughs> this is a really flawed WrestleMania, and it's the only time they've done this, where this one takes place in three different arenas. Yeah, I could not figure out why they did this when they clearly found the first one so difficult yeah. to, pr- to take off. Do you know why I think they did it? And I, I, I'm just This is just a guess. I think it's because of Live Aid. And oh, I what, think... they thought it was around about the same time? Right? Yeah, so, was, so this is like right. 86, Live Aid's right. 85. <laughs> so I think they're like, wow, we can do it in different locations, and we can sell loads and loads and loads of tickets, yeah. and everyone will love it. Actually, what happens is, <laughs> yeah, you do it in three locations, you sell loads and loads of tickets, and it's awful. <laughs> Nobody can run a VT properly. No. Things keep jumping in the and out. The microphones. <laughs> such basic things. And they just go, the last thing that anyone's done is go, right, just let's give the mics a check. Because it would be terrible if every time someone uses it, <laughs> there's really shrieky howl around. <laughs> Just give me Lord Alfred Hayes early on, <laughs> and I'll be happy. And I had to wait till the end for that fucking turn up. That's the problem with splitting it three ways: Furious. is you get a third of the Alfred Hayes <laughs> that you need he, to have a healthy life. He can't. He can't. Be, you need your three a day. Yeah. He can't be in three different places, being three times as unprofessional. Can he? Really? <laughs> so, imagine being two thirds worse than he is now. Imagine how bad that would be. The, the ideal thing, like Phil Collins in Live Aid, they'd have flown him from venue to venue, <laughs> and he could have been three times as bad. As he is on the day. <laughs> I also there is one bit I love about that, and it's Jesse Ventura is talking to Lord Alfred Hayes. But he's got this new thing where he started referring to Alfred Hayes, who is his friend, mm. just as Lord. <laughs> right. And that's like the wrong thing to do. I mean, you, you'd call him Alfred if you knew him. <laughs> or you might call him like Lord Hayes, but just he has, Lord. He has got a nice new white suit. He I mean has. that that demands attention and respect, Mark. I spent a lot of time looking to see, and they never showed a shot of it. I wanted to see the groin. Because <laughs> I can't imagine Alfred Hayes is someone who's like, I'm toilet rigorous. <laughs> I just, I do not think that of Alfred Hayes. Oh, they'll be spotting. Oh, massively. They'll be spotting. I don't, it'll I, be undone. His shirt will be coming out of the flies. I, I don't think he'd necessarily bother getting it out. He'd be like, I'm on in ten. Uh, what can I do? It's happening now. You've got ten minutes, Alfred. Plenty of time. I'm all right. I'm all right, Jack. Don't you worry. I'll tell you what, I, I'm uh, going to go back and uh, set up. I think our next guest is Bobby Heenan. Alfred, why don't you take over on the barbecue and wrap this sucker up? I'll catch you later. Okay, Vince. How can can you come in our barbecue and tell us what to do? How can you tell us what to do, Lord Alfred? Our barbecue? You come to our barbecue and you want to tell us what to do, Lord Alfred? Lord Alfred, ready now, baby. Make sure it's good and tight. Vince McMahon makes an appearance right at the start. I thought, wow, he's front-loading with his stars. I don't know who Susan St. James is. A cursory Google says that she was starring in something called Kate and Ali, which seems to be, it would be like getting Monica from Friends to commentate. Yeah, and And she just turns up in like a jazzy jumper. Everyone in this thing, though, (laughs) is is there, they are like, they need no introduction, because, of course, they're so famous. (laughs) Not now, they're not. No, they're really not. Not a single one. My absolute (laughs) favourite one is uh, Mean Gene Oakland. He says, uh, well, she knows where the beef is now, it's Clara Pella. And is it that, cuts to a woman who's is, about 100. Is that that old lady? What's her <laughs> deal? Because it got to the end, I was like, I've been watching this for three hours, I've got a, I don't have time to research who this random old lady she was. She was in, I think, like an advert for Wendy's hamburgers, I'm ah. not sure. And her catchphrase was, where's the beef? Um, right. A, and they went, do you know what? Stick her in, no context. I seem to recall. What's funny about it is, we always have that thing of going, well, we grew up in Britain, yeah. so we actually have a real understanding of America, and it's these sorts of things that you go, shit, there's a load of stuff that didn't, <laughs> didn't cross the pond. <laughs> the, where's know? the beef lady? I, I mean, when they sort of say, here he is from Silver Spoons, and they, Hollywood star, Robert Conrad, <laughs> it's just, like, it's like when you go to France, and they go, oh, we've got loads of famous people here, and you go, I've not heard of any of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is WrestleMania. Here to see America, the beautiful, would you please welcome... The Great Rita! 
You know, like a crappy karaoke bar. Yeah. Where you're singing a song and there's like a montage of different scenes, like eagles and, yeah. and kind of the Grand Canyon stuff. That's kind of what's happening while he's singing. He says at one point, what am I singing about? <laughs> America! Uh, uh, but he doesn't do it with enough conviction that you don't think he's just asking a question. <laughs> I wrote down how they run out really quickly <laughs> of things. So it goes, images of America, you, it starts, the iconic image of America, a cactus. <laughs> Second one, some sea spray. Yeah. Then you get the Iwo Jima statue. Right. A veteran. There's a group of soldiers. There's soldiers at war. Then they struggle. And then there's a miner. Then they go construction workers. And then just some blokes in an office. There's an office (laughs) of a load of guys just standing there. After that, a man on a tractor, a woman (laughs) digging in the dirt. There are then two Amish children, right? But ends <laughs> with Hulk Hogan. A long shot of Hulk Hogan. Yeah. And he looks so bloated and <laughs> and and full of, you know, whatever he's taking. And he just looks like a big, raw chicken fillet. <laughs> and it's disgusting. Where's the chicken? <laughs> but like, he's pointing at the, I think he's pointing at the American flag in one shot. Mm. Fireworks happen. Yeah. And Ray Charles hears the fireworks. <laughs> and I swear he looks up. Even though that man hasn't been able to see since he's been four. Yeah. He's had terrible glaucoma. Yeah. He can't see. Why is he looking up? I had a little look at Ray Charles' blindness. <laughs> you had a little look? I had a little look. A little look. He... I mean, is it merciful that he never saw any of the WrestleMania oh, 2? I mean, he certainly didn't miss anything. <laughs> Um, they said uh, he, he was blind uh, since he was a child. It was glaucoma. Easily fixed nowadays. Unfortunately, he grew mm. up in very, very poor background. Mm. It says his blindness, this is a Wikipedia entry, his blindness never stopped him from learning to ride a bike, play cards, use stairs, or even fly an aeroplane. <laughs> I'd say, I'd say, <laughs> even fly an aeroplane is not actually as impressive a last one as play cards. <laughs> right? <laughs> I can't work out the cards. What am I singing about today? We then cut to an interview with Rowdy Roddy Piper. Yes. I didn't realise, because maybe I'd not heard him be interviewed that much. Yeah, Did he always um, have such a high voice? I do a bowling ball on my stomach! I gotta do this! I gotta do this! <laughs> you say, Roddy, well, you're sitting there talking. I say this to you. I say, if Mr. T can knock me out in this fight right here, I would not only quit professional boxing, I would quit and retire professional wrestling, I would quit tiddlywinks, I would quit dating girls. I'd stick with you. I would quit it all. <laughs> you see, Pete, this might have come as a surprise to you. He says, he's talking about boxing Mr. T yeah. later on, and he says... Which is like something, I, I didn't realise that boxing's allowed now. In... Do you know what? It was a really, really bad call to do that. And mm. I think it was probably, Piper would take Mr. T on it, his own game yeah. and that put a bit more jeopardy in it and the very fact that neither of them are boxers they might as well have had a fucking lacrosse match <laughs> I mean, it's appalling but the one thing that McMahon mm. he's always sort of seen things off the field and sort of went oh let's bring that on the field in, yeah. in, in the key th- there's that thing of going because they didn't like each other did they right, they didn't right, like right, each yeah. other no and I think I, I also think there's that thing of going how can we appeal to outside wrestling boxing is big at this time mm. you know you've, you've got Mike Tyson so Susan St. James is huge at the moment <laughs> get her in the beef lady get, get the beef lady in Susan St. James to have a, a, an MMA fight. In the, in the f- I don't watch that. I don't, wa- I don't watch the in, fuck out of in that. In the first one, yeah. Look. So Piper basically says this line where he says, I'll never shave my head like an Indian or paint my face black. But let me tell you something. Never will I shave my hair like an Indian and paint myself black. <laughs> to who? Ladies and gentlemen. 14 words, two really, really racist <laughs> statements. <laughs> but he says, I won't paint my face black. All I'm going to say, Pete is wait till we get to WrestleMania 6. He does not. That's the nighty, surely. Even at the time, (laughs) within wrestling... People were a bit like, oh, not the comfortable junk, The junkyard with this. dog's going, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is this? So, then we go to the first appearance uh, on a WrestleMania of Randy Macho Man Savage. Yes, I wondered about this. And George the Animal Steel. The least dignified wrestling match I think I've ever seen in my life. I... Even though it's Macho Man Randy Savage's debut at I WrestleMania. I love this match. <laughs> I really do. I, I think George the Animal Steel is everything I want for wrestling. He's the hairiest wrestler I've he, ever seen. He's very hairy. <laughs> <laughs> I, how do you even pick that guy up? Oh, He's yeah. too hairy. Do you know, my favourite thing about him 
He <laughs> is. He, but he's not hairy on his front too much. It's no. Just, just all his back. It, it is like a, <laughs> like a pullover that he's got on. Because it's, it's like, he hasn't got a hairy business, neck or hairy business legs. Business at the front, party at the back. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's like it, a back mullet. Do you know those books you used to get where you'd like flip the head and the body and the legs? <laughs> and you could do different combinations. <laughs> There'd always be one of like a bear in there. And it just looks like that. <laughs> I love George the Animal Steel. I really do. <laughs> the best thing about him, he's actually a guy called Jim Myers. Mm. And he uh, <laughs> was, from the 60s onwards, he was a high school athletics and wrestling coach. Right, okay. And he worked at a high school. And he continued to do that throughout his wrestling career. <laughs> and when pupils would say, Mr. Myers, you look just like George the Animal Steel, he would just say... If I was George Animal Steel, would I really be working in a high school <laughs> being a wrestling coach? Um, and it, taking six months off a year. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is, sir, you've got a perfectly hairy torso. <laughs> and no, a lot of men have that. Do they, sir? Sir, you've just eaten a turnbuckle. <laughs> What's that about, mate? I, You're not eating human food, you're I eating a turnbuckle. I love this match. It's got a simple thing that George the Animal is a very simple guy, <laughs> mm. and he's in love with Randy Savage's yes. valet and wife in of real course. life. Yeah. Elizabeth. Um, and it's, I find his portrayal absolutely charming. <laughs> I really do. I think it's just brilliant. Where he's at the end, where he's talking, he's pleading with Elizabeth yeah. to be with him. Yeah. And Macho Man has gone underneath the skirt of the ring and then comes out the other side. Yeah. Because the animal is so besotted by Macho Man's lady and, mm. yeah, he gets done in. It's heartbreaking. I think Flowers he's... are involved at one point and there's just. I say undignified just simply because a man's eating a turnbuckle. I know. And also he gets hit by a, some flowers. I so. love it. You've got a clear hero, you've got a clear villain, he eats a turnbuckle, he then gets bits of it and rubs it in the Matter Man's face, and the Matter Man reacts like he's been glassed by it some was, foam. It's fiberglass, mate. It's <laughs> it horrible. Probably is. It's probably asbestos. <laughs> you know, you've got a big kick out, the Matter Man, is he cheats to win with his feet on the rope, and then yeah. at the end of it, George sort of gets a cheer because he chases the referee. I think, in a weird way, <laughs> it's as good a match as you can imagine. I really, really like it. The, the nicest thing about Jim Myers, who is George Animal Steel as well, is he was so well respected mm. in his real job so he talks about like he'd, he'd do a full day at school and then he'd get in the car he'd drive he'd go and wrestle he'd get home at 4am and then he'd be up at 7 in the morning to do his normal job jeez he only died earlier this year yeah. he was uh, he was quite old but I think 77 or something like that Good but innings. he lived to see their sports field at the high school where he worked named after him and they <laughs> called it you know the Jim Myers thing. missed opportunity God, there no, come on now absolutely it should have been <laughs> the George the Animal Steel and in tiny little letters underneath was he Jim Myers <laughs> <laughs> keep that gag going um, there is I should also mention really early on there's a disgusting under nutsack shot of Randy Savage uh, yes oh. there is uh, yeah I think I was admiring that as well yeah what the world has come to <laughs> what the world has come to just one last fact about George Steele in 2008 he co-starred with Greg Valentine who's also on this Wrestlemania in a short film entitled Something Fishy in which two former wrestlers purchase a fishing camp the film served as the pilot for a comedy series that was not developed further. <laughs> wow. Give me your head right here. I can talk. And I'm all. Give me your head here. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I had a customer. I had customers. Animal. It's an alien smelt. My fish. Hold on. Okay, 